What's up guys, welcome to the only series that can take a one day sports festival and drag it out into three weeks. <laughs> yes, we're watching another episode of My Hero Academia and this is the finale of the fight between Gentle and Deku. And I have some thoughts on some of the exchanges in this episode, so let's get started. So first things first, obviously Deku is cutting it right down to the wire, which I expected considering that was already sort of set as sort of what was happening in the last episode. So he's running it right down to the wire. He's kind of getting everything. Well, I don't know if he's got everything because he is fighting gentle. I don't know if he ended up getting the rope or not. Yeah, I just thought of that. Like he had the rope and then he started the fight. So I don't think he has his rope anymore. So he'll get back and not have what he needs. That, that's great. I just had a thought, why couldn't Momo just make rope? I'm nitpicking at this point. Let's get into the episode. <laughs> so obviously at the start of this episode, we have a recap and we have the sort of highlight of the last episode of Deku and Gentle fighting in that little industrial area. And then we get into sort of the opening followed by what's going on at the actual school and some of the sports event stuff going, or school event stuff going on. So the first thing we see is actually Monoma and his class kind of laughing at or complimenting, not really sure, Kendo for her dress and the way she looks for the for the beauty pageant. Now, of course, he says it's a compliment. I half expect her to just bash him in the head. She doesn't, which is unfortunate because I like seeing her just smack him in the head, but whatever. But after the exchange where Monoma is sort of like, I was a compliment kind of. But then after that exchange, we have Nejure and we have, what was her name? Bibimi? Bibimi, who, uh, we're sort of, at this point, kind of getting, not tense, but it was definitely getting into that sort of, who do you think's gonna win sort of thing, and obviously they're all taking it very seriously, so who do you think's gonna win, you know, that kind of deal. It's a fight between women, oh boy. And like, Bibi Me's costume is just ridiculous. Like, she's got eyelashes that could like, take down, like, or take an eye out. I don't know, I'm curious to see what's gonna happen. Apparently, Kendo got a bit of sort of popularity from her internship, the same internship that uh, Momo was part of. So she, I don't know if she's gonna be sort of the dark horse of this event or not, if she might have like some stealth popularity from that and maybe get a little ahead with that. But uh, I don't know, we'll see. But um, I'm really hoping that, that Nejire actually wins because uh, this is her final chance to do it. So we'll see. But pretty much all of the start of this episode is just getting our characters into their place for the main event, which is obviously gonna happen next episode. We have Midnight, being made aware of and all my already knowing about Deku going off campus. We have, oh my gosh, this makes me so freaking excited. We have Mirio and Eri going to the event. I'm so excited to see what Eri does. I'm so excited to see like how she's going to react. And of course, Mirio being the way he is, he's like being kind of a father figure to her, which makes me really excited. And then of course we have Hatsume getting ready. Just a complete mess because of the amount of time she spent working on all the stuff that she's been doing. It's it's just funny. And she is, of course, completely oblivious to her filth because she's just been working so hard on everything. <laughs> then we pick up after everybody's sort of set in place for next episode with Deku, Gentle, and Labrava. And we learn a lot this episode about both, well, Gentle and Labrava, and it's very sad. Like, these characters are probably some of the more tragic villains we've dealt with in this series. Even if they're not the most threatening by any means, they are definitely the most, like, tragic. Except for, I guess you could make the argument that there are some more tragic characters, but we haven't really delved too deeply into them, so we'll just focus on them and say for now they are some of the most tragic characters we've dealt with. But as the fight continues, we have Deku realizing that because Gentle has no control over how long his quirk stays active with air and with the other things he's touched, he's able to, Deku is able to sort of take advantage of that and use those, those movement points that Gentle put in place and remember, if he watches carefully, where Gentle moved and where those placements of his quirk are at. This allows Deku to land properly. This allows Deku to get shots off at Gentle because of the fact that when Gentle goes to sort of activate his quirk in one place, Deku can readjust and use those bouncing points to get his quirk to hit Gentle anyway. Now this is also where Labrava is sort of really trying to get Gentle to, you know, let's use my quirk, let's use my quirk. And now we know why Gentle, at the very start, cut out the one scene 
where he was about to be attacked by uh, by uh, heroes. I don't know why heroes was such a hard word for me to remember. But we know now why there was like that pink glow coming off the building and the building was all wobbly. So Labrava's quirk, I was right, Labrava's quirk is a supporting quirk. But let's talk about her backstory first before we get into her quirk. So back when she was younger, she gave a love letter to somebody who she cared about, somebody who she actually thought she liked. But she was very stalker-ish about it, and so they sort of made fun of it, and that kind of broke her heart, and as a result, she ended up confining herself alone to her computer, and even contemplated suicide. I mean, like, it's very, very dark, and she literally was just ready to die. And then she came across Gentle's videos, and that to her was sort of a bright light to her dim future. And it kind of gave her a second lease on life in a way. And when she sort of prettied herself up and went and confessed her fandom and love for, for Librava, or for, for Librava, for Gentle, when she actually went and confessed and he actually accepted her, that was the sort of second lease on life that took her to the next level and allowed her to sort of continue happily with the person she cared about. And we can see that even though they are villains, not any sort of serious villains to any major degree, but because they were villains, this is the first time we've actually seen villains who, well, I guess we've seen villains who genuinely care for one another, but we see sort of a much more beneficial relationship between the two and more of a love uh, than like a sort of screwed up family relationship like what we have with the League of Villains. It's pretty wild and actually it's really interesting to see how these two sort of complement one another and how the love is sort of reciprocated between the two of them in a lot of ways, the care, the genuine compassion that the two have for one another. It's really kind of deep and it's a very interesting sort of dynamic between these two. And of course, this is where we see Labrava get her hero, or her hero, her villain name, or her, her nickname, code name, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that made her very, very happy. Then we get back to Deku, pinning them down because he sort of got the upper hand on them. And this is where we learn Labrava's quirk, which is love. And this basically gives a complete BS overboost to whoever she confesses her love to. And the stronger the love, the more the powerful the more the more powerful the person becomes and so she confesses her love to gentle and this is where his strength raises he's able to almost i mean he doesn't actually take out deku but he definitely lands a pretty solid hit on deku and man like this is where we see him the we see what was cut out from the first time we meet gentle and he puts up a damn good fight with deku and deku points out he's fought stronger and has not, you know, not been defeated yet. But the thing is, this is where we sort of delve more into Gentle's psyche. Now, before we dive too far into Gentle and his sort of backstory, we're very close to the start of this event. Uh, in fact, it is nine o'clock now and the event is about to start. And yeah, <laughs> the, the fight's still going on. Now, because Deku is still fighting and he's still actually able to hold his own against Gentle, Labrava feels as though her love was not enough, and Gentle points out, you know, that that's not the case. You know, he's, the, again, the caring between these two characters is legendary. I, I honestly feel bad for these two in a lot of ways. But we see the fight go on and on and on, and Deku is sort of trying to tell them what his, what his thoughts are and try to give his impressions of like, you know, you have this dream that's going to crush thousands of other dreams, hundreds of other dreams, however many people whose dreams are going to be crushed. And like, what, it, why, you know, like, what's your problem? He's trying to sort of give his thoughts and sort of get his ideas out to Gentle and sort of impress on him, like, you don't understand, we are working so hard on this and you're going to ruin it. And Gentle, of course, is pointing out that he wants to be remembered. He wants to etch his name into history, as it were. And we discover why because it's interesting because every time something like what we see with Gentle happens, I'm reminded again that this is the function of a hero society, a, a hero society, like, you know, where heroes exist, how would the government, how would the laws have to change in this, in this scenario? So essentially, 
Gentle wanted to be a hero, but he continued to fail and was essentially let go from, from his school. And another person who was in the same class as him had already been accepted to an agency, or not accepted, I think, yeah, I think he had been accepted to an agency, or was asking to be part of an agency. And Gentle's goal, obviously, was to become a hero, but if he couldn't really do it very well, if he wasn't adept at it, there was no kind of hope for him to be remembered in any significant way, but he wasn't discouraged. He wanted to continue. And what sort of broke him as a character is in one instance where he thought that he could help, he became much more of a hindrance and was actually charged as a criminal because there was a situation where a hero was needed because of somebody who was about to fall from a from scaffolding or from a, from a window cleaner. And he put out his elasticity quirk and it both blocked the hero who showed up from saving the man and didn't actually catch the man so he ended up being seriously injured and so well gentle was charged with interfering with hero work like a criminal and this resulted in him being kicked out of his home his his whole life was basically in shambles because he just became poorer and older and felt as though he was becoming less and less significant. And this just broke him as a character and it's very tragic. And the final nail in the coffin was when he came across the student that he was in the same class as, who was running his own agency from what I could tell, and he didn't remember who Gentle was. It's, it was just sad. And that broke him, that completely broke him. And this is where Gentle turned to the life of villainy in order to become a memorable, etched into history figure. But the thing is, Deku sort of has this realization, they are very similar. They are very similar. The difference is that with Gentle, his, his goals seem, at least to me, a lot more selfish than Deku's. Deku's goals have so many people being a part of and, and sacrificing for, for his goals. And the people who acknowledge him, the people who, you know, cherish him like all these things help him be a stronger person not just hero but a stronger person whereas in this instance it almost feels as though gentle sort of pulled la brava in like she willingly came like came with him but it's that relationship between the two that is very caring but it seems more as though Gentle has a more selfish goal, Deku has a more selfless goal. And while they are similar in, in their dreams and their ambitions for being remembered, Deku doesn't really, Deku wants to become a hero who saves everybody. And it seems like, at least from my perspective, Gentle just wants to be remembered. Now, while this fight between Gentle and Deku continues, Labrava is trying to hack into the UA system, and she has to kind of run closer so she can be she can be on their Wi-Fi and, and hopefully get within range for their network. And this is when she realizes that not only is the one hound dog hero, uh, you know, present, but we also have ectoplasm. So that is uh, that's basically where the beginning of the end of this fight starts. Now, at this point, we have Gentle sort of giving his all, his final big push to defeat Deku, and Deku is able to sort of get the upper hand with his new gear and sort of throw Gentle off with the wind bullets that, that Deku fires and land one solid St. Louis smash in shoot style, and that's enough to take out, take out Gentle. But this is where it's kind of interesting to me that Deku says that Gentle, after initially saying that Gentle you know, he's fought stronger than Gentle. He says that Gentle was the most difficult opponent he's faced. And I think that has a different meaning than what a couple people I've talked to think it means. So obviously, Deku wasn't laughing at Gentle Criminal. He was taking him very seriously. And I think previously, Gentle was more used to people not taking him seriously and he obviously sort of acknowledged the fact that people didn't treat him like a joke, but definitely didn't treat him as any sort of major threat. Now, Deku did, and with that, Deku sort of acknowledged that Gentle was difficult for him to fight. I don't think in the terms of 
combat. I think it was definitely difficult on Deku, but I don't think it was nearly as hard as something like Overhaul. I think the difficulty came from the fact that it was not just a battle of the strength, but a battle of the mind. I think that it was definitely a fight where Deku needed to sort of show that his goals, his mentality was the right mentality in that scenario and hold true to his beliefs and his goals and win. And Gentle acknowledges this. Gentle acknowledges that Deku held firm to his beliefs, to his goals, and won as a result. So while I was initially confused about the sort of phrasing, the way that Deku said that Gentle was the most difficult villain he's faced, I think it was more in the sense of ideology, because Deku had to sort of come to terms with, in order to accomplish the goals of many, he had to break down the dream and goal of one or two people. And even though the many people who had these main goals obviously were the priority, it's still difficult to take somebody's goal that they have set in their heart and take that away from them. Even if you don't agree with that goal, and even in this case, Deku not agreeing with that goal, he acknowledged that it was a goal that was sort of set in the heart of Gentle. So I think that that phrasing was more to imply how difficult it was for Deku to take away the dreams of anybody, even if they were a villain like Gentle. And it's finally at this point when Gentle kind of throws Deku off of him so that he can give Labrava a hug and acknowledge that in in that instance, it's, it's so tragic because he doesn't want Labrava to be treated as, a, as an accomplice. So he does everything he can to sort of take the burden, take the, take the goal that he had and kind of push it aside to protect Labrava. And it's just, it's really sad. And, and he, he gives himself up. He's, he, this is the end of Gentle Criminal. And this was an interesting episode because it was less of a fight of strength like we saw with Overhaul and Muscular and the League of Villains. It was, it was not so much a fight of just sheer strength. It was a fight of ideology. And I think it was very interesting the way they approached it because it shows that even people, and we know this because we've seen this with Shigaraki and the others, it's, it's a goal that the villains want to have a goal of, you know, bringing, I guess, world chaos uh, overhaul, wanted to bring the Yakuza to, you know, a formidable, you know, high, basically wanted to bring them up to the heights they were before. And in the case of Gentle, he wanted to be remembered. And it's sort of the fact that a lot of these other villains that we've seen with these goals sort of lose themselves by the end of their fight, and it's no longer about their goals, it's more about defeating who's directly in front of them because their goals have already been shattered. Gentle never gave up on the fact that his goals would be shattered until the very end, and he realized that Deku not only had the stronger combat ability, but the stronger will. And I think that really speaks to the way that this was written and the way that this character was written. I'm actually kind of sad that it's over because he had a really cool sort of character arc overall, as short as it was. But it's, you know, that's how the episode ended. And now we have Deku having to rush back to be a part of this UA festival. So I'm really excited to see where the festival goes. I'm just sort of sad to see the end of of Gentle Criminal in a way. But I mean, let's be real. We're all here to see the band perform with Deku dancing and, well, everybody dancing and the effects and everything. I want to see the culmination of what these students have done. And maybe that will sort of lighten the burden of the fact that a really, really interesting and well-written villain is now defeated. Either way, I was very interested in how this was going to conclude and it did not disappoint. I think that the approach they took for the sort of philosophy of these characters is, is really interesting and I hope that they continue to write more villains like this because while he seems sort of like a joke villain in a way, the fact that Deku took him seriously shows that, yeah, he's not a joke villain. He's a very capable and competent villain and, uh, I think that uh, it shows how interesting characters can be when you take the time to develop them properly. Not to say other characters weren't developed properly, I just think that you know losing yourself and becoming just a combat aggressive monster by the end of a fight sort of loses the viewer, whereas keeping your goals all the way to the end is much more interesting. Either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think that I was completely off base with what I thought about how Deku talked about Gentle being a difficult uh, villain, the most difficult to fight? I mean, I don't know if I was on point or not. I could be totally off, so that's up to you guys. Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, um, 
Comment down below anything else you want to leave. Uh, if you got a, another show you want me to watch, I'm currently trying to wrap up season one of Black Clover as another review that I'm going to do, so that's a thing. Um, and apart from that, yeah, other than that, like and subscribe, and um, that's about it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one. I have shirts. Please buy a shirt if you want to, or a sweatshirt. I'm getting desperate now. I'm just recording stuff whenever I can at the very end of videos because I'm starting to do context-specific endings and I'm running out of ideas. So just go go buy it, please. Don't don't be shirtless like Inuske. If you want to save some, go SFMH. Put that as the code when you go to buy it and save 10%. Please, just... Yeah, that's my spiel. See ya.